job. Um, the um, ability to show this uh, on uh, virtually is uh, basically because I uh, decided to uh, make some videos uh, because of the fire aspect of it and, and using it in the uh, veterans hall. Uh, so I had those videos already made, and uh, Chris uh, called me and asked if I could, uh, we could put it on via the uh, uh, Wood Turners channel. Uh, so yeah, it works worked well. Um, as far as uh, my relationship to Pewter, I started back in uh, uh, 2016. Uh, melting uh, or putting melted uh, pewter into holes that are drilled into the side of bowls no square holes and round holes uh, this is an embellishment and then uh, I was turning a bowl uh, that uh, they're trying to put a crenellated top on it and that didn't work and I had all these little chunks of uh, pewter and I said oh, I thought to myself I wonder if I can pour it into a rim so I started playing with that and um, started uh, the process that uh, I'm going to share share with you guys tonight. Um, uh, this is uh, not professional by any means. Uh, I, the filming was done with my iPhone um, and um, I couldn't figure out how to shorten some aspects of it so some of the turning might become a little tedious. I apologize for that at the beginning uh, but hopefully my uh, dialogue along with the uh, pictures will help to uh, show you what I've been doing. So okay, we'll start. We'll get started. And so these are just some pictures of uh, some of the bowls I've done. You can see in that one I, where I filled a uh, hole with it or a void, uh, the crenellated top, and um, trying to see if, that, see if that would work. Yeah, it did pretty well, um, and uh, an outside band. Uh, some of these you've already seen at, the, at our meetings. Um, and I found that the, the more the contrast, the color, the prettier these bands seem to look. Uh, light colored things don't show up quite as well. Um, the shine in this, you can adjust uh, with the amount of uh, polishing you do. And uh, I tried to see how many rings I can put on a bowl. Well, to and start off, uh, raw product uh, for the band is, uh, for me, has been uh, antique uh, pewter. And I'll find these in uh, oh, antique shops or flea markets or various places that you can find them. Um, basically, I'm what I'm searching for. I'm looking for weight uh, versus dollars, and uh, the heavier weight I can get, the more pewters in it. Uh, some things you'll find that have like candlesticks and sand in the bottom that give give you the weight. But on the bottom of uh, just about everything that you think is pewter, you're going to see a little pewter sign that's been engraved in the bottom. Uh, you have big stuff, uh, you know, small stuff, anything anything you can get, or you can purchase it online. Uh, there's several uh, places I've found looking online that have it. This big platter is uh, really heavy and it's gonna be, uh, be a good source for a lot of stuff. Um, so after I've collected the, the pewter, I'll uh, cut it up just with a pair of tin snips and then um, melt it down and store it uh, uh, in um, this form here. And basically just so these are those little, kind of little ingots that I have... Uh, melted uh, use, using a uh, ladle uh, and just uh, propane gas uh, torch to, to uh, 
uh, to melt it with, and then um, cut it up, put it in there, and then uh, pour it to the into this little it's a one tablespoon uh, steel measuring uh, spoon, and uh, get one of these and and pop it out. And I try to keep all of my uh, pewter from a given source in a bag so that I don't mix them up. You can see this pewter here is a little different color, not quite as shiny. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, pewter itself is uh, usually 85% uh, tin and um, 15, well, 14, 15% uh, antimony. And uh, no lead in it at all, so you don't have to worry about poisoning anybody. And of course, all of these containers that I had before are for put, putting hot uh, tea in or coffee or stuff like that. Uh, it has a you know, very low melting point. Um, if you don't have a ladle to, to uh, to melt your uh, pewter in, you could make up a little tin can. These are this is a can that some sliced olives came in, and I just bent a piece of steel and put a hose clamp on it and bent a little pouring spout there that I can pour it into the form on the uh, on the wood when it's ready to go. The uh, heat source I used for melting the pewter. Um, that's basically a propane uh, tank. You can use that uh, MAP gas too. It's a little more expensive. The, the propane seems to work just as well. Um, and But the uh, thing that's really neat is one of these uh, um, kind of automatic on-off things. Turn it on. button and you're ready to go and turn it off and that's uh, just a lot faster than the uh, older one with the striker and the knob to turn it off on and off but otherwise uh, both, both will work one's just a little bit easier um, so I guess that's all on that the um, thing I didn't cover a little bit earlier uh, was the um, Temperature of the uh, pewter uh, when you're pouring it should be between say 250 and 350. I usually put it around 300. Um, but what I use to um, to measure the temperature is a uh, one of these um, gizmos. Uh, this is from William Sonoma. The tape is just so I can find it in my shop. Uh, and um, you uh, just now the, the next um, items you're going to need are um, or materials are those that will keep the uh, molten uh, pewter on the uh, either the side of the uh, bowl you're turning or on the uh, top rim and I found that this uh, silicon rubber that's uh that i cut off of a uh cookie sheet uh material is it works very well it has a temperature it says on this up to 440 degrees and it's just a baking mat uh material uh this i got to crater barrel crate and barrel i think there's other sources um and uh, you'll wrap it around the uh, perimeter of the uh, bowl on the top and keep to keep the hot uh, uh, pewter inside and hold that in place on the outside of the uh, bowl with uh, uh, hose clamps. Clamp it up tight so the pewter doesn't drop out the bottom. Um, the thing that you I had to play with a bit is joining a couple of these together and I tried taping them and tape doesn't stick to it but um, and uh, CA glue doesn't touch it um, so I found that uh, just uh, paper staples 
work quite well and they're thin enough that it doesn't cause much of a gap uh, for the um, pewter to, to drop through. And uh, so it was just cut off of a, a mat this size along here and, and there to uh, get the pieces I need. Um, that's for the outside of the uh, the band or rim that you're pouring. On the inside, I used uh, aluminum bands that fit down into a uh, groove that I cut with a uh, parting tool, a thin parting tool. And I made those of different uh, uh, heights uh, so I could pour different uh, amounts of uh, of pewter to make a taller rim or a shorter rim and not waste it. And th those are cut just from this aluminum um, sheeting material that you can buy at a hardware store and just take a um, uh, tin snips and, and cut those as straight as you can. Um, and then um, for wrapping the inside or excuse me the outside of a bowl to get a further distance from the wood itself to the uh, outside uh, or the inside of this uh, uh, silicon piece uh, I'll wrap it with uh, just string and try to give you an idea of the thickness uh, about that way and you have to make enough wraps to uh, have the same width as the width of your um, hose clamp that you're going to hold uh, clamp on the outside so it gets a uh, a nice straight finish and, and you'll you'll see this later in some of the videos that I uh, that I'll be showing okay. also it in in lieu of this aluminum um, sheeting that I've cut up, I've also used, I've tried, and it seems to work nearly as well, is just aluminum foil. Uh, take a full width of aluminum foil and cut it to the length of the um, perimeter of your bowl, and then keep folding it in halves, quarters, and eighths, and get it down to the to a size that will work to become the outside uh, band on your uh, on your bowl to hold the pewter in. Um, and then uh, I'll show you again later. Uh, this was another system I tried where I wrapped the band on the outside of the middle of a bowl and put a clamp on this side and on this side with a groove underneath and then poured uh, the uh, pewter down through the uh, um, through the hole that was left on top and that filled up the uh, the groove that was going to hold the band and uh, worked pretty well uh, surprisingly so I'll go on to the next subject. Oh, the uh, in the bottom of of this piece here, I uh, got a hold of this uh, cotton filler cord, which is real soft cotton, and I filled that uh, groove that I cut in the bottom of the or on the outside of the uh, bowl to maintain uh, that volume there, and then. After uh, I've got the aluminum foil in place, clamped in, I was able just to slide this out from from in between the aluminum and the, the bowl. And so it left the void there that I could fill with the uh, molten pewter. Now, um, we have to be Okay, we're going to take a quick little break. Um, let me um, stop sharing the screen for a second.
Okay, somebody wants to ask a question of Brian. Is there any questions you can you want to type in the chat that anyone has right now? I don't not seeing any questions. So that was just basically giving you an idea of what the materials are that he's using, and I'm sure he'll be showing you later um, how uh, those materials are used. Someone said they are enjoying it so far. Uh, someone asked, do you break apart the pieces of pewter to melt them down like the teapot? Uh, I just cut them up with a, um, a pair of tin snips. Uh, it's very soft, easy to cut. You have to cut it in small enough pieces to fit into whatever you're melting it in. But other than that, uh, no, it's no problem at all. Okay. Someone else commented a very good video. So we will continue it. Good, good. Next, go, go back. Prepare the uh, board or the bowl uh, to uh, to accept the uh, pewter and and hang on to it. And I've tried a number of different um, methods for doing that. The first one I tried was to uh, put a uh, tenon on the top. This is the brown is the is is the bowl wood cross section of it. Uh, this is that red outer band, the silicone um, rubber a hose clamp to hold that in place. Notice I have to go vertical here with the outside of the bowl, and the final turning of the bowl will be something along this line down here. Inside of that tenon, I've uh, put a um, uh, groove in there with a uh, thin uh, parting tool. And then the inner band was the aluminum pieces, uh, the sheet aluminum, um, that uh, were different heights. And then uh, the pewter, the molten pewter was pulled in, poured in from the top. And um, the advantage of one advantage of this is that you can raise the height of the band above the uh, bowl body. Uh, negative uh, of this is that it gives you a fairly small amount of wood to hold that band in place. And I'll go on to another one. Um, this is usually the one I use for putting the top band on. Uh, top rim on rather like I'm sorry I use rim and band interchangeably uh, again the outside is the same the outer silicone band with the hose clamp same on the inside but on this case in this case I uh, put a uh, a mortise inside uh, kind of dovetailed shape not doesn't have to be too great of an angle to hold it uh, but the advantage of this is that it raises uh, the depth of the bowl considerably uh, over the other, which, which had the tenon up there at the top of the uh, bowl material that you started with. And, and then you pour in your pewter and it runs around and fills up that. Uh, again, you need the outside pretty much perpendicular to the top of the bowl. And then uh, you're gonna turn away this wood later on inside and outside. Uh, then another one like that is, um, uh, again, trying something a little different. Um, same outside configuration with the outer band and hose clamp. The interior, this, on this side, I put it only a one-sided um, one sided uh, what do you call it? Uh, anyway, with this angle. Uh, uh, to, to hold the pewter and this, that angle keeps it, the pewter when it's cooled from moving up, the outside is being held because it's around the perimeter of the of the uh, bowl, and then the inside 
same inner band here. What I've done to keep this inner band in place is that I'll stuff it full of uh, sawdust down here and just kind of pack it in as best I can to hold it. And it makes it uh, fairly secure in there. Um, what I also do with, with all of these is that's, I'll initially establish the inner band height and then take this the bowl and turn it upside down, put it on a flat surface, and then attach the outer band to it. And that can rest on the on this flat surface that you've set it on and hold it in place while you're tightening up the uh, hose clamp. Okay, uh, and then the, uh, the easiest way is like this. Um, you um, cut a groove the height of your, that you want your band to be right into the top of the ball blank. Um, put a uh, mortise in with a um, an angled mortise and then uh, pour the uh, molten pewter in. And I will also sometimes put a, ba a hose clamp on the outside of this just to hold it, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But um, then you can just pour the whole thing. Then w when you're final turning, you're going to turn off that piece of wood on the outside that held the, the pewter in and uh, shape your bowl from that. Now the outside band is a little different um, in that what you're going to do is cut in a uh, groove into the side of your bowl that you shaped something like this. Again, you need this flat vertical piece right here to hold the hose clamp and the uh, silicon rubber in place. Um, and depending upon the angle of this uh, curve right here, uh, the gap across here changes. And if it's big enough, you can pour pewter directly into that and uh, be done with it. Let it cool and start on your turning and then you're going to turn off this outside and of course the inside. Um, and then a, uh, kind of a follow up to that one is uh, if this angle is too flat here coming down to that and you've cut in your groove here you can build up this section down here, and that's what the uh, string was for that I talked about earlier. And just you wrap a nice uh, even um, coils of string around the, um, the bowl. Again, this is vertical right here. Uh, put the hose clamp on. This is a little more difficult to hold in place because this outer band, this rubber keeps on wanting to drop stuff like that. Now, one thing I've used that seems to work uh, fairly well without leaving any kind of evidence of it is to take a stapler, again, a little uh, paper stapler and staple that uh, band right into the wood and it leaves such a tiny hole you don't see it. Uh, then once you get it all the way around, you put on your hose clamp and clamp it tight, pour your pewter, um, and then turn, turn the rest of the bowl. Um, and then the, uh, the final one that I have done is the, um, is with the aluminum foil. Uh, here I've cut a groove into the side of the bowl, wrap that uh, thick twine or that uh, stuffing uh, stuff that I had, that cotton batting type material. Um, put that in there, put the, your aluminum foil over it, clamp it on either side of that, and then uh, you're going to bring that up to one side that you want to leave uh, a hold on it that you can pour your um, uh, molten pewter in, and that pewter will run around the um, 
perimeter of the um, bowl and fill up that this volume and then you'll have to turn of course all you all that pewter off but uh, you can pretty much use the outside of a the shape of the bowl you uh, end up with and um, the final thing that I've worked with uh, not to say a lot of other things that can be done is that you can pour an interior band and uh, this is pretty easy because you don't have to do any um, any banding at all uh, with you know, additional materials. Um, but the, the critical thing is you have to leave this vertical because centrifugal force is going to keep that band or the, the molten uh, pewter in place uh, while it cools. And um, if you have this angled at any any amount, that pewter is going to get forced out of the uh, out of the bowl and be all over the place. Not by experience, <laughs> uh, so you have to uh, leave a bit of extra material here. Cut in your uh, groove into the inside of your bowl. Uh, put it on the lathe, turn it 200 to 300 RPM. And it really, I think a lot of it, that RPM depends upon the diameter of the bowl, uh, how much, how fast you're gonna have to spin it. Um, one thing on both this and the uh, outside band is because you aren't cutting any uh, dovetails in that or any, any angles here, if you make a mistake, you can, uh, dig this out fairly easily and just pop it out and uh, remelt it and report it again. Uh, so both the outside and inside, uh, you have some chance of recovering it without damaging your turn bowl at this point and the, uh, and the pewter, you know, just a matter of doing it again and changing the RPM or the heat of the uh, molten uh, pewter maybe. So those are, um, some of the things you have to do to prepare for before you uh, pour the uh, hot pewter. Okay, that's the first of our videos. Let me um, get off this share site for a second. We'll get Brian, we've got several good questions in our chat room. Okay. Um, so the... Um, First one says, do you break apart the pieces of pewter to melt them down like the teapot? Mm -hmm. um, wh whatever will fit in your melt, what you're going to melt it in is all, just get it that small. Um, is it difficult you, to break apart like teapot, for example? Is it? No, not at all. It's so, it's so soft, uh, you can, uh, you know, may have to take a lean on your, um, uh, Tin snips a little bit, but uh, no, it'll cut, or you could cut it with a saw if you had to. Okay. But uh, just get it small enough that you can get it. Or even sometimes you can fold it, uh, say a thin plate, uh, and then hold the torch over and melt it right into your melting uh, container. Okay. Here's a question about the wood movement. It says, does the heat from the molten pewter cause the wood to move very much before you finish turn the bowl? Uh, I haven't noticed any at all. Uh, one thing I didn't say, maybe I'll say it later in the thing, uh, you have to be sure you're using uh, fairly dry wood. Um, the first couple ones that I tried turning, the moisture level was higher than uh, it should have been. And uh, the uh, molten uh, pewter will start uh, causing the moisture to turn to steam and you get little uh, bubbles blowing up through it and blowing mm. hot pewter around. So you want to stay on the dry side as far as wood wood goes. Okay, that's a good point. And um, the other next question: What tool do you use to cut the tenon in the rim, and how wide is the tenon? Uh, really, it all depends on how wide of a band or rim that you want on the top. Um, if you're happy with a half inch wide one, you could. You know, I try to get, make that, uh, excuse me, the tenon of the groove. It says tenon. Tenon. Uh, you probably want to leave uh, at least an eighth inch thick at the base 
of that. Okay. And then as far and as far as the uh, mortise in the bottom, uh, probably an eighth inch there and at the top of it, and at the bottom you can just flare it out a little bit. Uh, and the reason for having a little bit that width is to get the molten uh, pewter to uh, be able to go down into a, to that crack. If it's too thin, sometimes the pewter will just uh, solidify right at the top of that crack and not make it all the way down. Gotcha. That's part of the reason I uh, get the temperature up to around 300 to 320, something like that. So it is very visc or uh, liquid and uh, it'll move into those cracks. So that temperature um, point uh, comes to the next question, which does the pewter burn the wood? No, uh, sometimes it'll scorch it a little bit if you get a little too hot. Um, I poured it in uh, redwood, with, uh, real dry redwood, and there's no scorching on that. Um, sometimes you'll pour it and it'll kind of sit there and bubble a little bit for maybe 15, 20 seconds, and then it cools down very quickly. So I've never really burnt a piece of wood, but uh, maybe discolored it just a little bit. Okay. Um, someone asked, is there a source for pewter apart from breaking up pots? And someone else answered that craft stores and Amazon sell it. Have you Perfect. any experience? No, I haven't. I, I've, only, I've only used uh, antique stuff. I want to say an aside that when Brian and I were been um, working on this demo for you guys, he said, now everybody's going to be buying up all the pewter that I get. So I think his source of pewter is uh, going to get smaller. <laughs> it's going to dry up. So. Yeah. So um, are there, the next question um, is, are there visible seams between each pour of pewter? No, you make it as a continual pour. Uh, if you stop and let the pewter cool, uh, and then try to re-pour more on top of it. It doesn't bind to the first pour. Uh, so you want to have enough pewter uh, uh, melted uh, and at temperature for the for a continuous pour for whatever you're doing, the top rim or, or the band. Um, I just had a thought on that. Um, Well, you brought up a, something that I thought of as you were saying that. And so you have some sort of a container where you're heating this pewter in that's bigger than that container you're using to pour it into the pot, into the seam, right? Correct. Yeah. Usually yeah. I, oh, that was, that was my thought. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 use, I usually melt uh, oh, 50% more than the measured amount or the estimated amount that it takes to fill a deal. And in the next uh, video, I'll tell you, I'll show you how I okay. measure the volume uh, okay. that you need. But I always uh, pour extra or melt extra uh, so that um, sometimes you get some spillage. And uh, you know, if you don't have, if you just use the exact amount, you usually get to end up short. So okay. I always pour, pour more and then just let it cool down in the, uh, whatever you're melting it in and, uh, you know, use it the next time or, you know, it's, it's not like it's hurting anything by reheating yeah, it. Yeah, right. Um, uh, someone asked if you can cut the pewter on a bandsaw. Have you tried that? I haven't. I haven't. I've uh, been able you to could, do so. a pair of, uh, yeah, I might, it might grab. Oh, yeah, depending on the, if it's, especially if it's around and out of, yeah. yeah. Be a little careful on that. Um, last question. Um, so I don't know. Do you have any of the pieces of pewter that are not melted laying around your shop? You could show. Someone wanted to see the bottom of one of the pewter pieces. Sure. To see sure, the I emblem. Have, just, just a sec. Right there. I don't know if we're going to be able to get the light. Uh, oh yeah, maybe, maybe not. Good enough, but um, I'll hold my first. Uh, to yeah. your other direction. There you go. Oh, it's not out of focus. And can you turn it up a little higher? Stop maybe there. And can you uh, see the little word 
I can see it, but it's out of focus. Try raising it a little higher up and then turn it again. A little more, a little more. No, and right. You, it usually it'll have a hallmark or at least it'll have pewter written on it. And, and it has okay. a interesting sound. It has kind of Oh yeah. Kind of a hollow a thuddy sound to it. Yeah. There's another one uh, right at the tip of the pencil. Yeah, we're not seeing it very well, but I'm sure they can Google that and get an idea of what yeah. some of those are. All right, well, let's continue yep. on with our um, videos and see what you've got for us. Oops. I want to. Okay, no. I got to go back here first. Oops. So. Next one, that's still the first one. We're gonna go to the next one. There we go. Okay, this is the, the top rim. And that, I guess I can talk, I'm just setting up the uh, bowl here so you can see how the turning was before I used. On this is to um, put a kind of a dovetail groove down here that is gonna, that is gonna secure the uh, uh, pewter to the bowl. Inside of that, I have another rim that I've placed the uh, aluminum um, pieces here in. And now I'll pack down um, sawdust uh, to secure the uh, aluminum in that groove. And the, the depth of that groove that I put this aluminum piece into um, really uh, depends upon the height of the rim that you're going to want to end up with. So, and and the thickness of or the width of the uh, piece of aluminum itself. So I just kind of work it around and hold this down while you're tapping it in. As soon as I get this done, I'm going to turn it upside down and then um, place the uh, outer band of uh, silicon rubber on it to, uh, to keep, it, uh, keep the uh, uh, pewter from uh, flowing out, you know, over the edge. So what we're, we're going to be doing is filling this area here, putting the band up on the outside. As soon as I get this tack, tapped in, I'm just about done now. Then I'll um, blow this extra sawdust off and hopefully these aluminum rings will stay in. I'm just going to turn this over. If you notice, I've left the four-jawed chuck on it and I found that that's real good stable uh, uh, thing to have because you don't want this tipped at, at any direction because the uh, molten uh, pewter will uh, run off to one end or one edge of it. So now I'm gonna turn this over. I have to get some little uh, things right here so I can lay it down on that. I'll stop it right now. Now back again. I have this uh, little pieces of wood that I have circles cut out of that I can place that allow that to set down right on that aluminum piece that I have in there. And then I'm going to wrap it with uh, the silicon rubber. And it's nice to do it this way because it uh, makes sure that the inside and outside bands that are controlling the uh, the uh, molten pewter will stay at the same height. And I'll just tighten this up a bit. Kind of 
and make sure the band's a little low. Raise it up just a little bit so it's everything's nice and equally banded with the hose clamp. And can snug it up nice and tight. And then we can turn it over and it's ready to be poured. Make sure I blow out all of the extra sawdust. And now we'll melt the um, computer and pour it into this groove. Now to determine the amount of pewter we need to melt, I've come up with a system that uh, I'll show you right now. So to estimate the uh, amount of uh, pewter we're gonna need to melt, I've uh, come up with this and I use sugar to fill up a funnel. And then uh, I have the bottom of the funnel down in the bottom of the groove right now, but I'll lift it and just run it around the outside of or the uh, the groove, and it'll fill the groove with sugar. And then because I've been melting and storing my compute my. Uh, Computer in these uh, one uh, tablespoon ingots, I can um, just measure the amount of sugar that I'm going to pour out of this. There we go. So I have that filled, little little sloppy, but not too bad. It's, it's just to get an estimate. That's it, not perfect by any means. And then uh, now that I have the sugar in there, I'm going to dump that into a container. And then um, put the same scoop that I made the uh, my ingots, poured my ingots with. I'll, I'll use that same scoop and measure the amount of uh, sugar that uh, was used to fill that area that we're going to put two, three, let's say four. four plus uh, ingots we're going to have to use to fill that volume. Okay, I've just uh, I put uh, five five uh, eight tablespoons or ingots of A pewter into my can and then I've taken a little uh, piece of metal kind of like a spatula taken off any uh, slide that might have developed on it and so it's nice and hot right now and I'll start my pour I think you can see this reaction there maybe with a little bit of moisture that's in the wood one thing you have to be careful of is not to use too uh, too wet of uh, wood when you're doing this otherwise you'll get steam um, produced and blow this uh, molten 
uh, pewter all over the place and get yourself burnt. Um, so you want to be kind of careful on that aspect of it. Uh, the, the other thing that I really haven't talked to about on this on this is that I believe the same system would work well when you're if you're using um, oh um, what's the plastic stuff that you pour in um, Anyway, this is as a nice, nice even pour around the outside. I'm going to turn it down a lot, or some anyway, and so we'll recover uh, the extra uh, pewter. Uh, and this is just hardening up right now. You can see there's no smoke coming from it, so it didn't burn uh, the wood. Uh, a little bit will uh, take the uh, the bands off. This inside stuff we can pop out either now or later. A lot of times you can just get a pair of needle nose pliers and break that loose and put it back in your melting pot. loose and so that inside band will come out real easy if for some reason you get a pour that goes down and seals that in the uh, inside uh, aluminum in you can uh, just put it back on the lathe and turn down past that uh, aluminum and then you can easily remove the uh, aluminum from the uh, from the pewter oh, it's all nice and hard now So I can take that off. There. Looks pretty, looks pretty good. We'll let it cool down uh, quite a bit more before we uh, put it on, back on the lathe and start turning it. Okay, that's the point where we're gonna take another break here and um, go back to some questions. We've got a few in the chat room. Um, some you kind of answered as you went along. Um, someone asked, have you tried other metals, silver or aluminum? No, aluminum would be too hot. Uh, I think the melting point of aluminum was 1500 degrees or something like that. I think it would burn okay. the heck out of wood. Yeah. Okay. Um, and have you tried little wedges to hold the interior wall, say every couple of inches? I, I did that at first, and that's what I, my, up until maybe a month ago, I was using little wedges, and uh, they're, they're more difficult to put in than the uh, sawdust, and um, if you missed and uh, spilled some down into the crack where the wedge wasn't, it would seal the uh, aluminum band into that uh, interior uh, groove that we made mm. and made it harder to get out. And the sawdust seemed to work a lot easier. Okay, uh, there's a question. Are you able to reuse the pewter that you shave off when finishing the bowl? Oh yeah, that's the neat thing about this whole project is uh, why you don't really have to worry about over pouring or melting too much is that you can, you can recapture it quite easily. Uh, really the trick to that though is uh, and I think I discuss a little bit later uh, in, in when I'm turning is that uh, you want to uh, have all the sawdust, real fine dust, vacuumed up off of the floor close to your lathe, because when you're turning, uh, the little pieces of uh, pewter, um, if mixed with uh, the uh, with wood, uh, and you try to remelt it, it uh, you have a much more difficult time separating the uh, mm -hmm. the pewter from the uh, burnt uh, wood, and um, so it, it just makes a, a cleaner uh, method of, of cleaning of reutilizing uh, that 
pewter that you've uh, that you've trimmed away. Good excuse to clean your shop too. So, <laughs> so someone asked if you know how dry your wooden pieces are as a percentage of uh, moisture content. They're they're probably ten percent or or less somewhere in that range. In that range. Okay. Another person asked why sugar. Um, it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, salt, salt would work probably just as well. Yeah, uh, and I just you know, it's, uh, it's sugar. Okay, that's granulated yeah. and small and fit yeah. in all cracks and crannies and easy yeah. to get. Out. Yeah. Um, there's a question: Can you use this method for resin? Yes, um, that was on my notes to tell you. I think you can. I think uh, uh, easily. I think you have to make it more. Say, I'm going to say watertight, but resin tight. Uh, the, kind of the neat thing about the pewter is that once it starts cooling, um, it won't flow at all, of course, mm -hmm. and it becomes solid. Uh, where resin, I guess, uh, stays liquid for, depending upon the type of resin, I guess, uh, for longer periods of time. Yeah. So you'd have to be a more uh, of a more secure band inside and outside. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, Rust made a comment that the internet says the melting point is 563 degrees and the pout, pouting temp is 650 degrees. Yeah, I I've looked at that too, and I um, I checked my uh, uh, my uh, melting pot when I'm melting it, uh, and you know getting, getting it ready. And at 200 degrees, the stuff is liquid already. Hmm. Uh, and I don't know if it, there's different alloys that make up pewter, and I think some of the some of the alloys may be that high of a melting point. Mm. Um, and I guess that's why well, I've only stuck with uh, antique pewter, and whether that that alloy that they use in uh, making pots and uh, uh, you know little dishes and stuff like that uh, may have a different melting point. Uh, than what you see and that I've seen on online. That's a good point. Um, last oh, two questions. Um, silver solder instead of pure silver? Question mark. Uh, never used silver solder. I only use pewter, just directly. And then uh, at the at, at the end of this evening, um, I would like to show you uh, how to correct problems that you that I've had <laughs> that you may. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh or a problem um in in the pouring and correcting that so you don't have to scrap the bowl and start again all right just a comment from jerry hall maybe you're using centigrade question mark no no it's, <laughs> okay. it's fahrenheit all right well let's go back to your uh video and we'll continue on okay no. <clears throat> After the uh, pewter co cooled, I uh, mounted back on the lathe and uh, turned out the bottom, or some of the bottom of the inside of the bowl here, so that I can get in here and work the uh, pewter. After I turned this down, I cleaned up the floor real well so um, I wouldn't have uh, very much so that sawdust in the uh, in the pewter when I uh, melt it back down again. So I'm going to turn the uh, lathe on. It's uh, set at 300 RPM right now. Um, and we're going to take off the rough part of the pour into this, this pointed scraper. You can hear the low spots 
is it's still a little skip in this island. Inside here, you won't be able to see the cut. You can hear the roughness. It turns not much different than than wood. Uh, seems to want to grab a little bit more, a little harder. But cuts easily with the turning wood turning tools. hear that that noise there's a rough piece in there somewhere yet I haven't gotten down to of, of all the rims and bands that I've turned I think I've only had one that I've had no flaws in the in the metal sometimes it'll be a little pitted area and I just mark that off to artistic okay let's see if I can do the outside here I think you can see that see what it looks like there you can see these if you can see that or not the uh, this little rough area there I'll have to keep turning this part down to get below that until for everything to look nice and smooth like this area a little bit on the corners well, I'll just keep turning that down I think I'll switch now and to use a uh, a ball gouge and then uh, use it as a kind of a slicing cut through the uh, through the pewter. Thank you. And I turned the speed up a little bit more too. running loud out. Yeah, about 450. Sometimes you get some chattering vibration of the ball and uh, you can smooth that out somewhat changing the angle of the cut and uh, also if you kind of just have to use the back side of the bevel 
on um, this side here. You can hold it up against it. And get it to uh, basically rub the metal pretty hard and the uh, computer pretty hard and move it uh, smooth out the little waves and stuff that you get on top that's what that looks now Almost, there's one little one right here, and this other piece on the corner that goes down there. Just a little bit more. hard to get in here with the tripod. I'm using a iPhone to take this picture, these pictures with. Just, just attached to a, uh, a tripod. And around the corners over there a little bit. Get in here. Something like that. Let's see what it looks like. A little piece there. A little bit on the edge. I'll get that from a different angle, I think. Move the phone. And you see that one right there. A little bit more. And um, that's pretty much it. I have to do the inside of the ring, but I can't show you that while I'm working on it. But it'll be the same, uh, same method. Um, this outside is pretty smooth. There's, there's not many uh, little bumps on it. There's some piece on the inside here I'm going to have to go in. I don't know if you can see that on there or not. Nope, you can't. Um, piece down here that I'm going to have to... Uh, Take a little more of the pewter away there. Can't get too close because the the uh, amount of wood you have holding this uh, pewter to the to the wood uh, uh, is fairly thin inside there, so you have to kind of be careful not to take away too much pewter. So I'll uh, turn it off here. Just turned it right back on. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about this. This whole system of using pewter, I think, will work just as well with uh, the thing I couldn't think of before, a, a resin or uh, epoxy with uh, you know, metal powder in it or, or just colored to, to put a colored room on a piece of wood or a band on it. Um, 
I think the same uh, same system would work well. It may have to be a little more water tight so the stuff doesn't leak out because the uh, the pewter uh, solidifies uh, much more quickly than your resin or epoxy would. But anyway, I'll uh, finish turning the inside of this bowl. Well, I finished turning the uh, the inside of the pewter ring, and it came out pretty good. Um, to change or, yeah, change one way or the other, make it shinier or uh, um, not shiny, <laughs> um, you can use, I've been using uh, just 4 uh steel wool and uh, turn it on, just hold it against it and uh, it'll... Uh, take out some of the real fine tool marks that you might have left with your turning tools. Or if you want to go the other way, you could use uh, uh, fine sandpaper to uh, leave little lines and make it look a little more antique, I guess. Well, that cleans up nice and shiny. And what I've been using for my bowl finishes is a uh, uh, general finishes, uh, wood bowl finish it's called. Uh, it used to be salad bowl finish, but uh, it seems to protect the uh, pewter. I don't think it'll oxidize and get a patina like you would with uh, older patina or older uh, pewter. Um, and uh, so I'll just finish turning this uh, like a regular bowl and finish it off. Okay. Uh, Just put it, continue on a little bit further on that. I think it has the uh, the turnings on the floor. Oh, okay. On the next uh, video? No, it's not. Maybe it's on, it's on the next one. Then. Yeah, okay. it's on the next one, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to stop that for just one more second. He's got one more video that's about 10 minutes long, but a um, couple more questions. Someone asked if you tried carbide tools. No, I haven't. I just have uh, high-speed steel uh, tools, and if they're sharp, they cut without any problems at all. And someone commented that a steep shear cut might even out the bumps. Probably. Um, probably I think it's just the angle that I was cutting at to get yeah. that that vibration, that little chatter. And then um, someone asked, what level was the outside of your bowl turned to? I'm not sure if I understand the question. Outside what level. The outside of your bowl turned to? It, it, was, it was vertical. Oh, beginning. yeah. Maybe that angle he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. And then sanded, he has a question mark. And I was thinking about that, too. When you're, you know, now you've got the 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 pewter rim nice and shiny and polished up you got to be really careful blending that wood as you're making that transition right i mean yeah you have to go real real dainty real slow at that and just, you know have a steady hand yeah uh, but 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 if you if you got into the pewter you can still rework the pewter down to where you have a nice smooth transition so even yeah. if you hit it with some sandpaper or something, you can just go back with the with the four dot wool and yeah, something. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, and before adding the pewter, he said, what level was the outside of your bowl turned to and sanded before adding the pewter? Not no sanding at all. It just yeah. just a nice straight cut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the questions we had there. Um nope. Is there anybody else that wanted to put anything in to the chat before we get going on that? Oh, yeah, there's a question there. Uh, have you tried embellishing the cut? Oh, I have. Yeah. Um, I have a uh, texturing tool. Uh, I forgot the maker of it. Um, uh, anyway, uh, and it puts a little ding in the pewter, but not very much. Uh, I tried it on a piece, and I thought it looked better smooth. Uh, but uh, I think everybody's got to try some. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's how we learn. And you're not going to hurt anything. You take it off and smooth it down a little further past it if it doesn't look good. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, 
uh, yeah, I, I encourage everybody to try it, try it differently because it might be a better way. So I'm sure there are. Cool. So, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so we'll, should we go on to that next, the last one? Sure. Okay. I think there's a little ways before you start talking about anything on this one, but. I'm not sure. Yeah, All right. About, so, yeah, this is the groove on the uh, side of a bowl uh, cut before I put the, the band on the uh, on it. And this is the wrapping of the uh, string around it to get a little more distance in the gap to pour the pewter in. And you kind of see that, that how, how it's raised the uh, or, or extended the uh, circumference of the bowl. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is the clamp holding the uh, silicon in place. And you can see about the size of the gap you have to pour around it. And uh, just getting ready to finish heating up the computer uh, to about 300 degrees. And then I'll pour it in the band, or a band that's on the outside of a bowl. About 300 degrees, just a little bit higher. I'll get ready to pour it here. And I've m melted more than I should need. You can see it flowing around. It's equal around all the way. That's good. And then we'll let it cool real fast as you can see I've made the uh, place this band here up just a little bit above the groove that was uh, turned into the outside of the bowl so it be sure to fill in uh, the whole uh, band and uh, as you can see already this stuff is hardening up. It cools down quite quickly. And you see, uh, again, that was at uh, a little over 300 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, no burning at all on the wood. And the silicone rubber band on the outside stands up to uh, quite high temperatures. All this extra pewter, of course, I'll be able to save when I turn it off and use it for another project. So I'll turn this off and get ready to... I'm going to pour... The next one will be a, uh, a band on the inside of a uh, bowl. And that's really easy because all you have to do is make a groove and fill it and then turn it down to... The shape and size that you want the uh, the band down to what size you want that'll be the next shot so this is the uh, board pewter with the uh, uh, string on it and you notice the string is hardly singed at all and the outsides are turned there that I uh, had the outside uh, rim uh, or for an outside rim. And what you can see, I've turned down this portion up here. This was out flat and I've turned it down to get rid of all of this wood here before I start working on the pewter. And uh, now I'll start turning the pewter down. And um, hopefully you'll be able to see. You know, what I use is this sharp pointed scraper. Actually, it's the same little tool I use for cutting the uh, uh, tenons on the bottom of a bowl uh, for the four yard chuck. And um, I'll start off. Uh, turning that down start about 300 uh, 
RPM so that the chips don't go flying all over. And after I get it kind of smooth with the, uh, the scraper, I will um, switch over then to the uh, bowl gouge and use a computer down to the, uh, to the side of the bowl so it's, it's nice and smooth. And I'll, I'll show you in a bit. You have to get rid of the, these rough chunks here first before you can start. Start with the ball gauge and you can kind of see the shininess there is it. See it through the rougher, rougher part of the floor. Again, all, all of this pewter we're gonna sweep back up later and use it melt it down and then use it for another project. Okay, that's kind of smooth by now a little bit. I'll change the angle of this so I can get in there a little closer and hope you guys can still see it. So it's kind of a scraping cut on this. I'll speed it up just a little bit. About 425 now. So you can see probably I'm removing well, well over 50% of the uh, of the pewter that I melted and poured in and uh, it doesn't bother me at all because I know I should have a good good surface when I get down to the final outside diameter of the bowl. Pretty close. That looks good.
Now it's just a matter of uh, working the wood, getting it back. But before I do much more work on the wood, I want to sweep up all of these uh, pewter shavings uh, so they aren't mixed with too much sawdust. Makes it a lot easier when you're remelting it and not getting uh, all the sawdust in it. But, uh, it kind of burns. And it's not that hard, but it's uh, just easier if you keep them separate. So I'll stop there and um, just rework this bowl um, like you would normally without the pewter. This is the uh, all the filings from that that uh, I'll just pick up. It's kind of neat because you can take it and crumble it up in your fingers, make little balls out of it, and then put it back in the whatever you can melt and the stuff down there, and it melts back down to a nice little ball for the next project. All right, Brian, that was great. Very good. There was a few <laughs> more few more questions in the uh, chat room, but um, one of them was asking, can you get the pewter too hot? Yes. Well, if you get it too hot, you burn the wood. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the wood, if you look on a lot of sites, uh, uh, basically it burns at about 500 degrees. So you, you should be good up to that, but you don't need to get anywhere near that hot uh, to melt it, or you shouldn't. Yeah. I don't anymore. Someone asked a question. I think you uh, pointed it out already. Does the pewter shards hurt when they hit your hands? But I think you just grabbed it, and it doesn't look like it's uh, sharp. Not at all. It, um, it's fairly soft. I don't usually don't wear gloves because I'm trying to control it a little better. I do wear a face shield. Uh, it's very important you do that because you get a little of those little chips in your eye and probably sting like heck. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to talk about uh, since I have a little time right here is uh, is when you're turning the pewter itself you want to go uh, slowly uh, and <laughs> yesterday I was turning a bowl that had a pewter band on it um, and I thought oh, I'll just get that pewter off real quick and I started working it uh, fairly quickly and pretty soon this whole band just came flying off and I said well, what the heck's going on and then I felt the band and it had gotten hot from the friction of the tool on it so it had uh, lost its strength uh, gotten molten enough to come apart on the uh, on the um, on the bowl on the lathe and uh, so if it, when you're turning it turn a little bit and then stop and okay. let it feel it and see if it's hot let it cool down a little bit if it is and keep on turning on those pieces that you, um, I, I know they cools very quickly, but before you start turning, do you wait a couple hours or overnight? Oh, no. or? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, it cools that quickly, so you can. Yeah, very quick. Yeah, you can put your finger on it in four or five minutes. Okay, cool. There was a couple of questions about the shavings. You talked about it, but um, just to reiterate, someone was asking about do the wood shavings interfere with the, pewter and and uh, and how do you keep them apart so no they, they don't really interfere but when you're melting it uh, if you have shavings wood shavings in it you'll get a lot of smoke up and the pewter is so heavy it settles to the bottom and the ash from the burnt uh, sawdust or turnings uh, stay on the top and you can just uh, scoop those off with a little piece of uh, I have a little aluminum spatula that I use that uh, you pick those off the top of the molten uh, pewter uh, before you pour your ingots uh, you know, save it again. Very cool. All right. Um, I don't think there's any more questions right now. I do. I'm going to, um, if you don't mind, Brian, we'll go back, show the first couple minutes of the first video because I think it's um, it'd be sort of interesting to see what you've already made again now that we have a better idea of. Oh, can I? You, get, yeah, go ahead. I have a kind of a show and tell. Um, oh, that, that piece you that, that you wanted to show us with the redoing it, right? That. No, not that one. Oh, uh, okay. Just a sec. Yep.
Okay, so it's, um, anyway, when you're doing this, you're always thinking about, well, what else can I do uh, with this computer? And um, so I turned last week this bowl here with the flange on it. And so these are just routed in um, on the lathe and then uh, filled with pewter. And to do that, I melt the big, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my metal, my melting, uh, uh, this, this piece here. Uh -huh. fill, it, fill it up with molten pewter and then use a very small measuring spoon to fill each of these individually, each, each one, just fill one and then, and then turn it down uh, like you would the other ones. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you didn't have to create any kind of a dam or anything because it's just a router piece. Yeah, just going down in. What, yeah. I, what I did do though, uh, just to kind of secure them, is after they were poured, before I started turning, I took some CA, thin CA glue and went around the perimeter of each one and it went right in and really sealed them into the uh, wood. Mm, okay. And then another one uh, I made is a uh, this little plate that sits up on a little stand. But um, oh, that's cool. Poured it into that as a, again, that's a continuous pour. You have to kind of move along fairly quickly to get it in, and then you have a big mess of uh, pewter on top that that turns off easily, and then just sand it on down. <laughs> Sorry, I was starting. I was laughing because someone said "great presentation," but they they had to wear their mask. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked a router setup to cut the metal pour notch. So um, you just had a um, um, you have a router it, mounted on your lathe. Uh, yeah, I have uh, an indexing. An indexing wheel on your lathe and then a router. You can see it, you can see it right here. Uh huh. So I, I have a clamp that holds that in place that I can move it along. And, uh, and then here I just set it at an angle up high so it would intersect at an angle and then uh, move the uh, router into it. Gotcha. Okay, I'm going to. Um, so real quickly, your first video again, just because I think it's interesting now that we've gotten an idea of what you've done, mm -hmm. see it, um, see some of the pieces. So on this one here, you can see those the silver in the bottom of that. Those uh -huh. were voids that I filled with it. And it's good for filling good big voids, but once the crack or the void gets out to a very thin uh, opening, the pewter won't go into it. I guess the surface tension is so great, you can't mm. get it to go into that crack. Right, that makes sense. Now, what about this one? How, how did you get those? Um, on that, I uh, turned the bowl flat. Um, trying to remember now. Did you make little dams and all the way around on each of those spots? No, it was just just on the outside. I had the bowl flat, turned it upside down, and then put it on my uh, uh, router table and routed out the. Oh, okay. So the the, the wood itself was the dam. It just right sort of on the inside, on the outside, it was the uh, the band on the outside. Oh, okay, all right. Or you could go either way and just make it bigger and like you did on yeah. the rim of the other one. And just mm -hmm. router out the section and then pour it. Yeah. Right. Okay. And just yeah. make individual pours on each of those. Right. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. That's kind of fun stuff. I mean, you, you you can't go wrong. It's not that expensive of material to to purchase. This uh, one's a little proud of the bowl, so a little uh, like yeah, I think the one yeah. you showed was flat, but. There's a little, almost like a little bead around it. Yeah, it just kind of, I le left it out a little wider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little flat plate, sort of. I like the grain of that wood with it. 
The grain is gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That one's a little proud too on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was this is a fun one because I had to start and stop this one quite a bit because I did did the top ring first and then the, the middle ring and then the bottom ring, but each of those I had to stop, turn it down to the size, go to the next one, estimate where that one's gonna be, turn it down the third gotcha. one. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, it's a stepwise uh, setup on the mm -hmm. third ones. Very cool. I think that was the last one you had on here. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, okay. Well, to start off. All right, well, um, thank you so much. That was really awesome. Yeah, I got a lot of compliments in the chat room. People were really pleased with what you did. So, can I can I show you? I want to show you the one thing about mistakes that you make. That, sure, go ahead. That I make. <laughs> mm -hmm. We still have thirty-four people on the chat. We are in the participants, so that's good. That's wonderful. Yeah, we had. I think all, almost everybody was here through almost all of it. It was just the last few minutes. People started dropping off. So sure, people were interested. No, no problem. Well, I'm, I hope they enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, sometimes when you pour, you'll get a divot, a place where it doesn't go. Mm -hmm. And that would require you to turn that whole rim down to that same Right, level. start over with a new pour, yeah. Just start over a new pour, and it's very hard sometimes, especially on our, the top. And so what I do is I take a piece of steel, and this is just an old punch, um, heat up this end here till it's almost red hot, not quite. Um, and then with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, hold a piece of pewter that maybe was a spill from earlier times. Um, I'm trying to get this back yeah, to where there you go. That's, yeah, that's there you go. the spot. Um, and so you have have this steel fairly hot and you have to melt this piece of poured uh, pewter to, to, till it becomes liquid and then you can fill it with the additional uh, scrap of pewter. If, if you try just to pour uh, a, a molten pewter into that hole or Mm -hmm. or Void. De depression it won't stick to the previously poured pewter and you'll you would get a seam there and or if, if, if it even stayed in place so you have to kind of melt it all together hmm. okay. so that, and that that's the really the only biggest problem i've had yeah well, it sounds like you learned how to solve it so that's what's yeah. important <laughs> yeah a lot, of tr a lot of trial and error here, and we appreciate you sharing all that trial and error with us. Well, you know, I think everybody can hear me right now. Yep. Everybody, everybody should give a great hand of applause to Chris Smith for <laughs> all of his effort he's put into this thing. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Uh, uh, we, you know, he, one, I got to know him really much better than I did before, and uh, he's a great guy, and he put a lot of effort into putting this in together for you guys so yeah well we're all learning a new 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 skill you learned to pour pewter i learned to do zoom meetings so yeah <laughs> that's good